morning, folks. Uh, welcome to St. George's Episcopal Church. It is June 7th. This is Trinity Sunday. Welcome. It's good to be with you. I'm going to wait for a few folks to gather, and um, so go ahead and get yourself situated, and then when we've got some folks with us, uh, we'll uh, say hello again. Good morning, folks. It is good to be with you. Gotta love things in churches at home, like uh, open bathroom doors. <laughs> ah, good morning. Welcome to church, welcome to Sunday morning. Invite you to take a moment to center yourself to take a deep, deep breath. <sighs> to invite the Holy Spirit into your home. Feel the floor beneath your feet. The breath filling your lungs. Give thanks for this new day. And welcome to church. You would like to follow along our bulletin is on our website st george's w a v l and that's s t george's altogether w a v l dot o r g my name is aaron maxfield Steele, and you are at st george's episcopal church uh, virtual and we are so glad that you are here our first hymn this morning is deck thyself my soul with gladness Deck thyself, my soul, with gladness Leave the gloomy haunts of sadness Come into the daylight's splendor There with joy thy praises render Unto God Unbounded, hath this wondrous banquet found 
joy the sweetest heart e'er knoweth found when so my being floweth at thy feet i cry my maker let me be a fit partaker of this blessed food from heaven for our good thy glory I pray thee, let me gladly here obey thee, never to my hurt invited, be thy love with love requited, from this banquet let me measure, oh how vast and deep its treasure, through gifts thou here dost give me as thy guest in heaven receive me Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to sing with me this time. We sing this three times. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. May God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in the faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, Creator, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. We pull up this morning, we have, like last week, um, the gift of more voices than just mine, and I am grateful for that. Um, so let me set that up, and then we will hear our first lesson read by Noel Schwartz. All right, I am not sure where our speaker went, but um, I will just hold this really close to you guys and hopefully you will be able to hear. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen. Sorry. I can't hardly hear that, so I can't imagine you can. Hold on one second.
This should be better. Okay, let's try that again. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me in our hymn. Our hymn for today is... <laughs> Sorry. Our psalm for today is Psalm 8. Let's say it together. O Lord, our Governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. I switched things around a little bit here, so now we will hear um, from the book of Genesis. And I want to thank Barbara Lassiter for sharing this with us and I want to show you the um, the video as well as the audio um, so let me get that set up <laughs> thank you Noel sorry I think you did say it's 2 Corinthians 13 I may not have adjusted. All right, listen to the story of our creation. Reading from Genesis chapter 1 through chapter 2, verse 4a. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let us separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. 
The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit you shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth everything that has the breath of life i have given every green plant for food and it was so god saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the works that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Thank you for that, Barbara.
I invite you to sing with me. Help us attend to your words, O oh God. Help us attend to your words, O oh God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Help us respond to your words, O God. Good to be with you guys this morning. I hope that wherever you are and however you are that you are finding ways to be connected with one another and to feel connected with one another. And I'm taking a moment to just uh, think of all your faces and instead of being frustrated with technology and my lack of preparation, which is <laughs> my norm, to recognize what a gift, what a gift it is to be with you this morning. What a gift it is to um, to listen to the words of God, uh, to the word of God, and to um, to explore who we are and whose we are this morning. Let's pray. Gracious God, send your Holy Spirit upon us. Grant us your grace and your peace. Help us to attend to your words, to listen carefully for the movement of your Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. This morning, we hear three different passages from Scripture that sort of all told give us almost a beautiful bookend. Um, from Barbara, you heard the words in the book of Genesis, you heard the story of our creation, this rich, beautiful imagery of the beginning of all things, of God creating and creating and creating, day after day, epoch after epoch, and then resting. And at the end of every act of creation, saying, this is good. Then in the words of Paul to the church at Corinth, we hear words of farewell, um, a charge uh, to who they should be and how they should be with one another. And also in the words of the Gospel of Matthew, we hear Jesus' parting words to his disciples, his charge to them to go and make disciples, to go and find other people with whom to share the good news and to remember that Jesus will always be with them, even to the end of the age. I think these passages are very helpful to hear at any time, but especially right now, to help us become more grounded um, in our own origin stories. And remember, this is one creation story of two in the book of Genesis, the story of Adam and Eve in the garden, and this story of the entire creation in which God creates humanity. Paul's parting words talk about how to be with one another. And this is very pertinent in a time like this. It's pertinent at any time in history. Paul writes, live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. These passages remind us who we are, and tell us what we can do and how we can be together. 
I've been thinking a lot recently about um, something I have I have heard described recently. And sorry, I'm a little distracted because Ursa is not happy. So my my heart is always a little split when he's crying. Um, I've heard a lot of talk recently about social justice. And I've heard people describe themselves um, or describe other denominations or groups of people as social justice people or social justice Christians. Um, and I think it's really easy to sort of to stick a label on somebody um, or to, to claim something as a particular category. Um, and then within those categories, uh, there are often these these other areas of focus. So we'll hear, we'll hear all sorts of injustices that are described um, as separate from each other. And they are separate from each other. But you'll hang with me and I'll, I'll get to my point in a minute. We think of racism and sexism and homophobia and all these different, these different areas of injustice as separated from, e from each other um, often. And I think it's tempting to do that because then we can sort of say, well, I'm picking and choosing. Um, and then we can lump them all into this category of social justice, um, which I have also heard described as um, the left's uh, agenda. And, um, and, and then people get lumped into political parties and persuasions um, and all of these things. Not to say that, that categories and subcategories aren't useful in describing things that are particular. Um, they can be, for sure. But what I'm getting at is that the, the foundational issue is a failure to value humanity. Um, I wrote down in my notes for this sermon that that is um, a simple reason, <laughs> which is... <laughs> course a very a very big uh, uh, misnomer there's nothing simple about it um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is all of the different injustices that we can put a name on all have in common the failure to honor the dignity of human beings the failure to to honor humanity um, and then we look at animal rights we look at environmentalism, again, it's a failure to value what is profoundly valuable. It's a failure to value creation. And there's nothing simple about that either. Something as simple as being reminded that we are created and that we are profoundly valuable um, and that the place that we inhabit is also created and profoundly valuable. Um, that it deserves our honor and our respect and that every human being deserves our honor and respect. Saying something like that as, as simple and sort of, well, of course, as it may sound, if you think about it, the profound injustices that we see around us um, all over the place that folks are crying out about in the streets right now, those, um, those all have this common root. People might think that they are honoring one another or that they respect humanity and human dignity. Um, but when they are killing people in the streets, when they are afraid of someone because of the color of their skin uh, or their gender or their sexual orientation, that is a profound failure of, um, of insight. It's a profound failure of valuing human life. Um, I don't know about you guys, I've, I've found myself watching more TV these days. Um, I've also been working, <laughs> working really hard, I promise. But, um, you know, if there's a, a little break or if, if there's a nap involved uh, with someone in the family, and I'll just sort of, oh, 
I'll just watch one one little show. And a, a show that I really like is called Queer Eye. Um, and if you haven't seen it, it is um, five openly gay guys who call themselves the Fab Five and who um, sort of take someone on who's been nominated by a friend or a family member and they just help this person out in lots of different ways. Um, you know, so wardrobe, makeover, whatever, hair, you know, sort of all, all of the trappings. Um, and then one of the guys uh, who's his sort of specialization is called culture, uh, which I would <laughs> potentially take issue with. He's the guy who always puts that person um, who is sort of the project person, which is such a terrible way to describe a human, um, into a situation basically where every time it happens I cry because, you know, if they're estranged from their parent, uh, it brings the parent back and they're, you know, it's just sort of this wonderful, uh, wonderful moments. So uh, a new season came out this week of Queer Eye and um, I was watching the first episode a few days ago um, and it parts of it resonated with me because it's about um, a, a pastor of a very small parish, Lutheran parish in uh, Philadelphia. Um, he has um, been out as a gay man for only 10 years um, and the first person he came out to um, was the woman he was married to. Um, and his coming out involved a lot of pain um, and a lot of self-doubt. Um, and so uh, Karamo, who's the guy who sort of creates these wonderful conversations with, with folks and reconciliations and those kinds of things, the guy who always makes me cry, um, invites him to a little coffee shop. And in the coffee shop is the first openly gay bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, and the first openly trans clergy person, a woman named Reverend Megan. Um, and so with them, he shares his feelings of, why did I wait so long to come out? Um, and, and why was I not more involved in the LGBTQ movement? Um, and just sort of all of this guilt and shame he carries from uh, having grown up in a Christian tradition um, that made him feel like um, his attraction to the same sex meant that he was flawed and um, and sinful and, and um, needed to reject that part of himself um, wholeheartedly as something that is sinful. And um, so he just talks about how he carries that stuff around with him and how he wishes he could be um, more of a leader um, for other LGBTQ people. And there's this beautiful moment where basically all of the, all of the issues melt away um, and Reverend Megan reminds him of his humanity, of his createdness and of his human dignity. And he, so he, he tells the story of this, um, this kid in his church who the, the grandmother and the mother have been waiting for this kid to come out since he was three. Um, and the pastor himself was waiting for this kid to come out ever since he knew him. And this year the kid came out and it was this amazing feeling for this pastor to recognize that his church was a safe place for this kid to be gay and open. Um, and a, a place where this kid was not going to feel what the pastor had felt growing up um, in a very homophobic Christian tradition. Um, but this was a place where that kid was going to feel loved and supported. And Reverend Megan asks the pastor, "Did you, um, would you ever tell that kid that he should have come out earlier? And the pastor immediately, without hesitation, says, no, I would never, never say that. And she says, then why do you say that to yourself? And here's, and here's the, um, the almost whispered afterthought that is so profound. She calls him child of God. 
child of God, almost as if, you know, it's almost like a southerner saying, honey, or sweetie at the end of a sentence. Why would you say that to yourself then, child of God? And that reminder of his simple, beautiful value as a human being brings him to tears and he says, I really needed to hear that. Now I think as complicated as it is and as much work as it takes, and there is a different layer of history and work that white folks need to do in recognizing that we often, we have been trained to overlook or diminish how we understand the humanity of others who differ from us. We need to heal from that profoundly because it also impacts us. That's not the reason we need to heal from it. We need to heal from it because we're killing people, because we're paying groups of people to police certain communities more than others. And people are dying and dying inside because of our inaction and our silence. And we also need to see the humanity that starts in ourselves, no matter who you are. And that is so hard. It's so hard, even for those of us who, like me, have grown up with so much privilege, that I have always been told that I'm a valuable human being, that I'm the top of the pile. It's still hard even for someone like me. And that's because our value comes from God. Our dignity comes from God. And who are we to disrespect that? Who are we to disrespect or dishonor the creation that God has made? The animals and the plants and the systems that God has crafted and set into motion. Who are we to dishonor one another, to dishonor the human dignity of another person? Paul writes this, and I'll end with this. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. And in Genesis, and God saw that it was good. I encourage you to commit today to honoring yourself, to recognizing that you are a child of God. And then do the very, very hard work of looking at every person that you see today and saying, that person is just as much a child of God. And I honor them. And I honor their createdness. Amen. One day I'll get the choreography of this service down. I even have notes about it. I encourage you to um, reaffirm your faith in the words of our liturgical affirmation found in your bulletin. Please join me. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are God. You are our God. We worship you. Amen. Let us pray for the world, asking that the God of love and mercy hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, 
for the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the unity of all peoples, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, Aaron, our priest, and for all clergy and people, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For all global, national, state, and local leaders, and for all in positions of power, that they may be held accountable to the people impacted by their decisions, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For this city of Asheville, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For God's good earth, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For all young people, protect and guide them, that they may grow in love and hope and may find your peace and grace throughout their lives. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. I invite you to take a moment and think of the ways that, that you have participated in the injustices, in the ways that you have failed to recognize and value um, the humanity of other people, in the ways that you have failed to recognize and value the creation. I invite you to take a moment to reflect. Let us pray together. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. <sighs> Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I invite you to pass the peace to yourself, um, pass the peace to the world, to your neighborhood, to your neighbors out the window, to your pets, to the people in your household. And if you would like to send us a quick note, um, you can click on the comment section, which is right below the video that you're watching, and it looks like a little speech bubble, um, and you'll be able to write in that and we'll all be able to see it. May the peace of Christ be always with you also with you. I'm going to go say peace to my to my weepy baby and my lovely husband.
I love it when you pass the piece to somebody and then they roll over and ask you to scratch their belly. That was <laughs> my dog, Johan. Let's see. I think we have some peace. Peace coming our way. Peace from Anne. Peace be with you, Mama. Let's see. Elizabeth Pendleton, so good to see you. Peace and love to all. Peace from Molly and Marsha. Peace from Libar, which is the, uh, what is that, the celebrity couple name of Lyle and Barbara. <laughs> Regina says, peace to all and the weepy baby. Thank you. Joy Steele, peace of Christ to all of you. Barbara Lassiter, God's peace to all. Noel Schwartz says, peace and love. God's peace. Annabelle did not quite make it to the peace before her nap, says Ashley. Peace, Ashley and Andy and Annabelle. Good to be with you all. Um, I have a couple of announcements that I'll share, and if uh, if more peace comes my way, I'll, I'll share that too. Um, we're so excited, I mentioned this last week, but I'm so excited to announce again that we are having a community chalk art day. Um, all of you are invited. I had some questions about whether people over 60 were not allowed to come. You can totally come if you're over 60. We would love to have you. You just can't be a volunteer um, because that would be us as an institution saying to, um, uh, to more high-risk uh, folks, please come and volunteer. So please come, do not volunteer, but we would love to have you and bring your chalk um, and bring kiddos and neighbors and who else, whoever else might enjoy it. Everett says, peace from Becky, Everett and Henry. Peace be with you guys. Um, so that will be June 13th, which is Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pretty excited about my dragon. I'm gonna do a, as detailed as I can dragon. And then the tail will stretch um, hopefully about 40 to 60 feet along the sidewalk and people at a safe distance from each other can um, fill in the scales of the dragon's tail. And then they can, they can also decorate around this outside and have plenty of space. We have plenty of concrete and uh, asphalt to draw on. So we are gonna just decorate the neighborhood and it's gonna be great. Um, I wanna thanks to, give thanks to Barbara Lassiter and to Noel Schwartz. Um, sorry that I flipped your readings around, but thank you so much for reading. Um, it's always wonderful to hear other people's voices and also um, I think we just, we embody these stories of scripture differently. Um, and so that was, that was a real gift to hear um, those passages from you all. I um, wanted to ask your prayers for all the folks who are in school who have just uh, graduated from either high school or college would have been a little bit ago, but um, you know, or, or even just finished their grade, graduated from kindergarten, whatever it may be. Um, blessings on you students if that's you um, and let's just pray for them as they enter this very very strange uh, summer holiday and um, yeah and for all of their caregivers and parents and the adults in their lives. Also want to ask your prayers for um, the Ballard family. Jennifer's father-in-law passed away uh, last week, Vincent Ballard, and so just pray for them as they grieve and as they um, sort of do the, the busy work that is very important of, um, you know, uh, settling his estate and transporting different things and just figuring all of that out. So invite your prayers for them um, as they continue and for Patrick, especially as he grieves the loss of his dad. Um, also wanted to invite you to, um, to something that we're going to start doing on Wednesdays at noon. Uh, we're going to start having discussions about racism at noon. Um, I heard from several different people, and as you know from my sermons the last couple weeks, I've um, been thinking about it a lot myself. Um, you may or may not know that right before uh, we went virtual, um, right before the quarantine and the pandemic sort of hit us in this area pretty hard, 
we had just started a film series on racism and we had just watched our first film and we were having Sunday morning discussions um, about those, those um, films and about white supremacy and white privilege and what that means um, to us as a predominantly white parish and a predominantly white denomination. And so um, those conversations need to continue and I think we need space for them and I'm grateful for the folks who, um, who are asking for that. Um, I think we need conversation partners because we do need help in honoring um, black and brown bodies, black and brown humans, um, and really recognizing their humanity um, because we have hundreds of years of history um, right up till the present um, that is telling us that we white folks are more valuable than others. Um, and that's not okay. We need to figure out um, how to change and we also need to figure out how to pivot to, sh to shift ourselves um, so that we can support the very people who are who are asking to be the leaders now um, and that's folks of color so um, we will explore those things and talk about those things um, and I want to invite you to start reading a, a book so it's going to be sort of a book study sort of a discussion I think um, I've heard from some of you that that a book can be a really helpful way to sort of have a jumping off point um, but where you're not just like inundated with information and you have to respond immediately you can sort of process it you can reread um, so we're going to be reading the book by James Cone the cross and the lynching tree if you've already read it I encourage you to read it again um, and if you would like to register for those Wednesday noon conversations please email Sarah um, and her email address is the St. George office email address which is St. George office 28806 at gmail that's on our website um, so feel free to email her and um, we would really love for you to to come and if it's a big group all the better invite folks um, invite anybody and it's uh, it's not just for white people um, <laughs> so invite anybody it would be lovely um, two more announcements on, no, three more announcements. This week, because we're having the chalk art gathering on Saturday, this whole week, um, we are going to be beautifying our property, which means if you have a rake, if you have uh, some leaf bags, if you have some snippers, uh, come on. And I love the way that Sarah, our parish administrator, described it. Come, pick a place, and make it beautiful. So just come, pick a place, just zhuzh it up um, and um, yeah another beautification kind of thing that's gonna happen hopefully tomorrow is the parking lot will be restriped um, so if you're really really if you're not working and you're bored at home and you really want to see some brand new stripes on our parking lot and some patched potholes come over after tomorrow not while they're doing it last announcement please join us for coffee hour after the service um, it's really lovely. Everybody has their own coffee. Babies usually make appearances um, and folks share stories of their week and how they're doing and coping mechanisms and all sorts of wonderful things. Um, so really encourage you to join us. The link is the same every week. It is at the bottom of your bulletin. It should also be in your email um, and it's also on our website. So you should be able to find us. If for some reason you can't, you can email me my email address is Aaron, E R I N, St. George, all spelled out, at gmail.com. Aaron St. George at gmail.com. And I will check my email during coffee hour in case you need a little help getting there. Okay, I'm going to shift our attention to Holy Eucharist. sun is sinking fast my race is nearly run my strongest trials now are past 
My trial has begun. Oh, come, angel band, come and around me stand. Oh, bear me away on your snow white wings to my immortal home. Oh, bear me away on your snow white wings to my immortal home. I know I'm near the holy ranks of friends and kindred dear. I've brushed the dew on Jordan's banks. The crossing must be near. Oh, come, angel band, come and around me stand. Oh, bear me away on your snow-white wings to my immortal home. Oh, bear me away on your snow-white wings. To my immortal home. Oh, bear my longing heart to him who bled and died for me, whose blood now cleanses from all sin and gives me The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing to give you thanks, O Holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven 
lighting upon the disciples to teach and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood, and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. I invite you to sing along. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in our own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us and so we violated your creation, abused one another and rejected your love yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death, resurrection, now we present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share in these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit 
and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your children, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever and ever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. invite you all to take a moment to share in Christ's presence, whether that be through consuming consecrated bread and wine or juice, um, or through consuming unconsecrated bread, wine, or juice, um, or simply through acknowledging Christ's living presence within you. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy and eternal majesty, holy incarnate word, holy abiding spirit, bless you forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is For the Beauty of the Earth.
beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the invite you to join us for coffee hour. Um, the links, like I said before, are the same as every week. Uh, feel free to email me if you can't find us. Um, it should be at the bottom of your bulletin if you've tuned into our bulletin um, on our website. And blessings on your week. Go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God.